Hi, I'm Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you the handover on the Malibu i500. So to hook the vehicle up on the driver's side rear, get your hooker blades, lift the collar and simply slide it on here. Always hook the van up first then the point as we wouldn't want you walking on the live lead you to leave the damage that's going to be wet. You don't want to get an electric shock. You've got your garage which I'll show you in a second. Here you've got your toilet, so this is your cassette toilet. So you'd lift the handle and you'd be able to slide out the van. You've got some wheels there to drag it around the site when it's full instead of carrying it as it may be heavy. And then empty. Take the grey cap off. Press the orange button, it allows a bit of air and stops it glugging and gives it a consistent flow to get all your solids out of there. And then once you have tipped it out, put some water in, give it a rinse and tip it out again. And then if you're using a liquid chemical, a cup full of liquid into here. But if you're using the tablets, put a pint of water in, push it back into the vehicle, drop the tablet straight into the cassette and it'll break up into the liquid. You'll only be able to get the cassette out of the exterior of the vehicle if the blade um, is shut on the bowl of the toilet. Further down you have your two fridge vents and your boiler blue, so just make sure this is obstruction free as it allows the nasties from the boiler out. And then you've got a bit of storage here which is heated. Should you have extra bits and pieces, you can put them in there and then to lock this one, turn it, turn the key and give it a solid tap. You've got your step which I'll go through in a minute when we're at the habitation door. You've got some more storage here and a bit of through load and so got anything long in order between the double floor come around the front so this door opens with the key not, not the key that drives the van the Cathargo key and then in here you have got your bonnet release which is just here and your weight plate which is just down there so there's your weight plate for the vehicle and then if we go to the bonnet you have a lever here which is your secondary catch if you pull that to the left this bonnet will then become free of the van and you'll be able to lift it up and then here you do have all your liquids so you've got your oil dipstick there for checking your oil and your filler is further back which is just behind this black pipe so your filler for your oil is just in there you've got all your fluids so you've got your radiator fluid then um, power steering fluid and your brake fluid at the top there they're just located all up there so brake, radiator and power steering fluid but the main one you're going to need when you're out on the road is your screen wash which you fill up from here and then you can see there that's your with the blue liquid in that's your screen wash tank if you did want to jump start the vehicle there is a jumping point here so if you lift this cover up that is your this is where your red clip would go on so this is your positive and your negative would just go on to the engine hoist loop here and that would be giving or receiving a jump start. Hey, you're saying that word. In here, you've got your diesel, which opens with the main ignition key. And then also on here, you do have your tyre pressures, which are located on the diesel flat filler. And then this is just your other side to your through loading which you've got access to, so you're through loading from that compartment to here you've also got your um, hatch 
in the middle of the floor which accesses that um, gully there for more storage and you do have your frost control truma in the corner which I'll show you from inside but while we're in here you have got your truma um, you've got your solar regulator and battery charger so this is a dual so it's charging two batteries so it'll be charging the engine and the um, habitation battery your leisure battery it's shown that it's um, on the meter here that it's doing 50 50 but if you want to change it, you just press here and you prioritize one battery over the other. So should it be standing, you can put it all in the engine battery and not in the leisure, or you can put all the leisure and not in the engine if you're using it. Here is a good size storage for your, your bits and pieces. And then in here, so this is your LPG locker, your gas locker, your liquid petroleum gas. It can house two six kilogram bottles in here. And what you do is, your hand tighten and then nip up with a spanner like so on the bottle and then turn on at the top of the bottle you've got a dual regulator so if you did want to fit another pigtail at this side you could then turn over at this side and obviously that's gone red there indicating that the gas is not working that's because there's no gas attached but if I go back it goes to green because the bottle's open this will tell you when it um, is open and closed so when the gas runs out but this is also heated as well so there'll be a switch at the door and um, which will heat the regulator and just stop the gas from freezing once it's coming through the van but always tie your gas in and should you be moving in transit turn the gas off and when you do turn the gas on if you just press this little black button here it allows the gas through the crush valve and into the van and you've got your storage facility here for your extension for your waist which will clip onto the waist and just extend it a little bit for decarting your waist off the van. So this is your fresh water so your wasa is your fresh water so you take the cap off you put a hose pipe in it there until it overflowed or you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel above the door if you were while camping you will have to take a full tank of water with you if you are planning on going to a site take a maximum of 20 litres of water with you as this keeps the weight down of the vehicle gives you a better payload for other storage items um, and it will improve the fuel economy of the van and this is lockable so you can lock it to stop people tampering with the water and then in here, this is just a smaller garage door. So it's heated in here. You've got lights at the top there. And you've got a storage reel for your own winding handle to sit up there. And, and then coming round to the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light with your reverse camera in there and your bike rack and operate your bike rack. Simply loosen this st strap off. So you able to pull the bike rack down and you've got three bikes there so a rail for put your bike through here through the spokes and tie the wheels down to the rails and then put your arms on there so through the crossbars of bike one and bike three and there's a second arm in there which would go on here for bike two so in your cab you've got your rear view camera and reversing camera there so when you're going to reverse you'll get the grid so that being the back of the van and that'll give you a meter as you've got to clear until you hit the obstruction you've got your step switch so that the step won't automatically go in with the, the engine you've got to manually take it in so you'll hear a buzzer until you take it in you've got your heated mirrors being your big mirrors you've got your mirror adjustment here Fog lights, headlight adjustments, your trip computer on the side of your wiper stalk. 
your lights and indicators and your cruise control and speed limiter and then you've got track this tins your traction control off this is hill descent control with the automatic as this is automatic which has got the comfortmatic gearbox locks the doors but, you've, but with it being these style doors you've got to manually lock it so this basically does nothing now USB for charging purposes and 12 volt Your USB for the head unit, the Pioneer head unit is in the top glove box which is cooled and heated by the air conditioning so if you've got any nice little bits and pieces like sweets or chocolate put them in there instead of getting up and down to the fridge when you're on the road and then operate your head unit which you can operate and have on from the leisure side as well by pressing the music button on the control panel it'll power this head unit up should you want the radio on on a morning You've got DAB, you've got FM, you've got Bluetooth so you can pair your phones to it by clicking down here. And then you've got the cog, blue, and you'd search for the connection and it'll find the device. But also search on your smartphone for AVH ending. 3100 DAB is what you're looking for, it's got here so that's the model number, the head unit you'll be looking for on your device and then you'll connect to it and then it'll ask you if you want to pair your contacts, press yes and it'll sync your phone book into here you've got USB, obviously when that detects as a USB in there or an auxiliary line and that'll go back to your hands free And beneath you have your climate control, so it's fully auto, you can turn it, set your temperature, this is where you want the air to go, so either footwell, in your face or up above, fan speed, recirculates the air, puts that on boost, so if the screen was starting to uh, mist up you can put on max and turn, the, turn this up and it'll demist your screen, you can have it off or you can put the aircon on. Got a lockable glove box, small glove box and obviously your engine battery does live underneath the floor so this is so if you ever needed to get the battery out as it is dead and past saving you can take it out here and then underneath your passenger seat is where you'll find all your fuses so this is your electro block and this has got all your 12 volt fuses on here which do the various items so it would be a good idea to go and get some spare blade fuses and carry them just in case one of these does go you can simply take it out and put a new one in and, and fix the issue and, and a black the carb out on an evening so the main screen you pinch these and slide it down the dashboard and that's the windscreen blacked out and your side windows just pull this away from here slide this down and shut that this must be open when driving you can't use it as a sun blind to keep the sun halfway out if your face when driving it must be open for to see and for greater visibility with the mirrors and above you've got all your lights for your under your bed area and you've got your visors which come down like that this customer's also had a tracker fitted to this vehicle so these are what's known as driver's cards so whoever drives the vehicle must have one of these on them personal otherwise the tracking system will ring you and alert you to think that the vehicle has been stolen so whoever drives a vehicle must have one of these on them I wouldn't advise putting them on the keys because if somebody steals your keys then they've got your driver's card and it won't alert the tracking system which won't alert you so what I'd advise is you keep one in your wallet or your purse um, 
and then that way it's always on you and you just pick the keys up and you drive the motor home and you've got nothing to worry about but if you don't have one of these they will alert you and ask you and you'll have to stand the tracking system down as it says you've forgot the cord so above the door you've got your main control panel you've got your true Duo C which heats your regulator for your gas and you've got your Truma heating which is gas only so to turn on and off you've got your master switch here which will either give you 12 volt if you weren't hooked up and it indicates there that we are hooked up so we're getting 240 volts on board if not it will just be off the leisure battery above you've got the pump which surfaces your taps, toilets, shower and above you've got the music icon which will power the head unit in the dash there you can see the pioneers coming on and above you've got your main master switch for all your interior lights and then they are all switched around the vehicle and coming to this side you've got the battery at the back of the van which is your leisure battery and it'll give you a reading there so it's 12.5 volts below you've got your fresh water reading so it's 75 percent of fresh water on board and then you've got your waste which is 25 percent of waste on board and then you've got the battery at the front of the van which is the engine battery for the fade engine and that is 12.5 volt coming next to it you've got your truma heating which is only on gas so you, once you've started it so you press and hold to wake it up and then you'll get the screen and click into it so you've got the van with the temperature this is the temperature of the van you have it on all the way off or you can have it all the way at 30 degrees for this we'll say 20 you press save then you've got your water so you've got on off so if there's no water on board don't put the water on you've got on eco you've got on hot you've got on boost which will prioritize the water from the heating so for this we'll just say hot and it'll heat the water up and then you've got your fan which you can have on eco so if you're wild camping you would have it on eco to save the 12 volt because it is just a 12 volt assisted fan or you've got on high if you were wanting the fan to heat the van up quicker and you would use this when on 240 mains hookup below you can set a timer here so you can time the heating to come on and off you've got the time for the main display here so this is the time so you turn that back and forth with the clocks and then should you get a warning triangle here you can go to reset and you can reset the boiler and to turn off you just press and hold and operate your true magic will see so in the middles of the top rocker switch is summer mode which will um, heat the regulator and the bottom is just an indicator to say it's green so you've got gas in the bottle once that goes red the bottle is empty and it will require it to be changed over to your secondary bottle or changed for another bottle in the bedroom underneath the floor so if you lift the panel up you've got your waste where you can gain access to it should you want to clean your tanks out after the season or the start of every new season you can access them here and you've got your fresh tank which you can clean out as well should you require but you've all, we've also got a travel drain which is here so you open this three quarters open this handle here and it'll leave approximately about 20 litres in the tank so it'll drain some water off to make you lighter on weight which is obviously better on your fuel consumption so underneath the main flap when you come in the entrance door it'll obviously give you the storage but also in here you've got your frost control for your boiler so your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time in the winter it's crucial that no water is left on board as it can split tanks crack pipes and ruin boilers which are very expensive to replace so you'd open this like so and this button will pop out and you'll hear the water cascading underneath the van so you'd leave this open the whole time that you are winterizing and then when you do come to raise the van you turn it horizontal and push the button in like so fill the vehicle up with water come in put the tap on bleed it through the cold first then the hot it'll cough split out, make all sorts of noises until you get a steady flow on one tap and then you do them all and then you are primed with your boiler this one is your hot water drain so you'd lift this up and any hot water that's in the system um, would just drain directly underneath the chassis and then to empty your waste water it's in here 
and there'll be a pipe outside where you can connect that extension hose on but normally you drive over a grid open this up and deposit your waste water so this is any water that's went down a plug hole so it's normally dishes water and soapy water and you just open it and drain your waste water off and obviously you would open the other one which is your travel drain as well on your fresh and this will drain all your water out so now in the kitchen area you so you've got your oven slides at the back like so which is lit and then you put your grill which lights take these out when traveling and then underneath you do have your Dometic fridge freezer So this is an automatic fridge freezer, so if I was to take the hooper out now, it would switch to gas. If I was then to start the engine, it would go over the 12 volt setting. Or you can manually override, so if you are on site, you're going to mainly be using hook up anyway. If you weren't hooked up, you'd use gas, and it self ignites. And then you can manually put it on to the 12 volt setting. And it'll fail because the engine is not running. As soon as the engine's running, it'll send a 12 volt feed from the engine to here. And it'll keep your shopping at the same temperature it was when you depart. So the idea is if you're going to keep this at home or you're going to keep this near a hookup facility, you hook the vehicle up, put your shopping in, give it a day where you, or overnight where your shopping cools down to temperature. And then when you are ready to drive, you just put onto the battery and it'll keep the shopping nice and fresh until you arrive at your destination but the automatic setting is programmed to wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas because you don't want to light on gas when you're in a filling station as it's the last thing you want is sparks to be sparking when you're in there so it is programmed to wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas or you can manually put on the gas you've got your temperature here so to five being the coldest and then all this button does is it allows a bit of heat round here to stop the rubbers from freezing but part of your winterization process as well so you've drained all your water off you've left all your taps open in the middle position you've took your shower head off is to push these forward and if you push these forward once you've cleaned your fridge out made it smell nice the last thing you want to do is shut the door so some people put fridge air fresheners in Let's pull them open and what they'll do is they'll allow the door to be closed but not fully closed and it'll allow air circulation in and out to stop any mold or bacteria from entering. Out of the kitchen you've got your gas burners and your sink cover and this sink cover works as a chopping board and you can go under here like so to give you a bit of extra storage or shelf to put your chopping board on when you're cooking on the hob and then open the cupboards if you just press the buttons in and lift and below you'll have all your storage so you'll have your drawers and in this drawer you've got your cutlery drawer and your gas isolation taps these so any problems with gas off at the bottle but you can't isolate each appliance so you've got your hob your fridge your space heater and your water heater but these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced in line with the warranty light your hob make sure your main control panels on and then you'll have a piezo ignition on there which is built in and a light your hob but make sure it's nice and cool before you put your glass lids down. So to use the toilet, you've got a button down here. So as long as the pump's on, you'll get the flush. And then if you open the blade on the bottom, so this is where I said if this is shut, you'll get the cassette out. If it's open, you won't. If you slide it to the right, you'll open the trap door and the blade and it'll deposit your waste in the cassette. Normally, to use the toilet, you just put some flush round, leave the cassette open, the blade, and use the toilet, and then close it once you've finished. 
and then this will go red to indicate the cassette needs to come out and be changed and replenished with chemical. We've got stuff for your toilet reason in here, so storage. And there and open this skylight if you just push the clutch in slide it along or put in the groove should it be a nice day and you want some ventilation but always make sure all your windows and skylights are closed when you are in transit you've got a blackout blind and a fly screen and your lights are here so one will be for your cabinet lights and one will be for your main lights and a tip for the shower if you take the shower head off it is a handheld shower with a trigger gun if you take the shower head off when you winterize and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray just to stop any water from building up in the u-bend here and freezing and open this skylight you would press the catches in and push it open you can push it open both together or you can have it one side down should the wind be blown from the other side and you've got a built-in towel rail here so you can hang your towels your wet coats or your wetsuits um on there you've got a side screened and a blackout blind for on an evening and when you're traveling just make sure these shower screens are tied back as it stops them clattering about at the back of the vehicle on both sides of the i500 you have your wardrobes you've got a you've got a usb on this side on the, on the passenger side rear and your lights are all individually switched and you've got storage same skylight as in the kitchen and bathroom. And then coming down to the front of the bed, you do have storage, cupboards this side, which just open, and two storage drawers. And the light switch for your shower is here. To operate your satellite dish, which is a max view dish, if you just turn it on, so you turn the power switch and then press on, it'll then flash until it flashes to two, and you want it to lock on the Astro 2. So when the green light goes solid, it's locked on, and it, to put the dish up and down, you would press here, and it'll automatically go up, and then you can press here to turn it down. Tobery Italy in the front, which is a Alphatronics, which comes standard with the Malibu. You've got a switch down here for your power, then you would turn on and to search for it, you go into your menu, do a normal search. This Astro must be say Astro 2 and not Astro 1, so it must be on Astro 2E, 2F, and 2G, and you're searching. And then you can do a search and it'll find as many channels as it can where you are and it'll probably pick them all up with it being have a satellite system. And to operate your Avtex TV in the back if you turn it on. Well it comes on like so. And then you've got source, so make sure it's on satellite on the source, as this is a satellite TV. And it's do a tune, press AQT, easy find will come on, and it'll find as, as many channels as it can where you are. And it should pick up a signal. If not, you can go to source, and you can put a DVD in the side of the TV. So to drop your bed down in the front, if you pull your seats, forward and then there's a lever on the side of both slide them down just do be careful with the driver's one that you don't put it so it puts pressure on the horn or you'll be setting the horn off and then you can push your tv down first and then you can press the lever and pull the bed down like so and operate your table, you need your table, put your foot on this button here and then you can slide it back and forth into the car or up to the rear seats should you need. And to turn the seats, there's a lever on both here so if you just push that back, if this one you'll be able to turn around like so. 
Okay. Thank you for choosing Time Valley Motorhomes to purchase your new motorhome. We hope you enjoy the van. Should you have any questions, once you've watched the video, don't hesitate to contact Time Valley Motorhomes on 01207 272 777 or sales at Time Valley Motorhomes.